So looking at the Norman Conquest by Mark Morris, we want to look at the first two chapters of Norman Conquest. Um, we see a number of things in the first two chapters, a number of key points. And some of the key points are the focus on lineage. What does that mean, lineage? Well, lineage means heritage, it means background. And it's very important to note that in medieval times, just like in ancient times, a person's lineage was all important. We've seen this before with Cyrus the Great and Darius. Their heritage, their background, their lineage is all important. Another thing you'll see that Mark Morris focuses on quite a bit is the sources. Mark Morris complains that there aren't many sources, and you'll see him referring to the same sources again and again. He refers to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. That's a chronicle of all the kings of England that was written by monks around the Middle Ages. You'll see him refer to the Bayou Tapestry. That's one of the most important of all. What is the Bayou Tapestry, the Bayou Tapestry? Now, you can find that very easily on the Internet, and you can see some of the images in the Norman Conquest book as to what the Bayou Tapestry was. It's basically a long, winding tapestry that tells the story of the Norman Conquest. Another source is the Domesday or Doomsday book that the Normans constructed when they came to England. These are all very well known, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, the Bayou Tapestry, and the Domesday book. And these are worth checking out. Another important point about Mark Morris in chapters 1 and 2 is the Viking story. The story of the Normans is the story of the Vikings. The Vikings, the Normans were descendant from the Vikings. As you see in chapter 1, and as you see in the podcast series Norman Centuries, the Vikings settled in northern France. That part, part of northern France called Normandy. It's still called Normandy today. Who were the Normans? The Normans were the Northmen, the Norsemen, and they settled in Normandy, in northern France. And geography is all important, and you'll see in the exam we'll have a question on the geography of this area. Where is Scandinavia? Where is Paris? What river flows through Paris? Where is Normandy? Where is England? Where is southern England? The, you can see all of these in the book, in the maps in the book, and you can also see them here. And so we'll have an exam question on that, an all-important exam question. Another exam question we'll have will look a little bit like this. Perhaps you'll see an exam question, can you select the sources that tell us about the Norman Conquest? And so look at the sources we've just discussed, the Chronicle, the Domesday Book, the Bayou Tapestry, and obviously the other two are wrong. So the Viking, getting back to our points that we see in Chapter 1 and 2 of Mark Morris' Norman Conquest, the Viking story is the start of the Norman story. What happened? Who were the Vikings? What did they do? Where did they conquer? In Ireland, they conquered in England, they conquered in northern France, and so they settle in northern France, in Normandy. And so from there, our story starts. The Viking story is the Norman story, and the geography of that is all important. But as we dig into chapter 1 and 2 of the Norman Conquest, we see court politics. What do we mean by that? What is court politics? Court politics is the scheming, the intrigue, the family disputes, the wealth disputes amongst the wealthy, the powerful mothers, the matriarchs, the powerful fathers, the patriarchs, the line of kings, and all the internal politics goes on in the court. A court is where the king is. A court is the king's castle or place. A court is where the king holds court. A court is where the king is. And so there's court politics. You really need to know what court politics is. And you see great examples of that in chapters 1 and 2 of the Norman Conquest. The court politics are people in the royal family or close to the royal families who are trying to outdo each other, trying to scheme, trying to overcome each other further, expand their own power. There's no better example of that than the court politics that ripped England apart in the 11th century. And that's the story in chapter 1 and 2 of Norman Conquest.